Hello, so it's been forever since I made a video of any type, and I thought it would be a great idea to go ahead and show my progress on my Farnsworth Fusor build. Since the last video, I have upgraded from a vacuum bell jar to a fully stainless steel chamber. As you can see, this chamber has two 6-inch conflat flanges and two 2.75-inch conflat flanges. And on this first 2.75-inch conflat flange, I have a viewport, which will be great for viewing the fusion reaction in real time. On the back here, you can't see it at the moment, but I'll show in just a second, there's a 1.3-inch conflat flange, which will be used for deuterium addition. So a stainless steel chamber has many advantages to the vacuum bell jar, one of them being that it's much better at blocking things like soft x-rays, which makes it a little bit safer option than the bell jar, and also I don't have to worry about the implosion hazard. Over here I have a thermocouple gauge, and this thermocouple gauge is connected to the roughing system, and I'll show that in just a second. So now we're looking at the chamber straight on, and this gives you a better view through this viewport. I can't wait to see the fusion reaction through there. Now, it's an important point to mention that I'm not going to be directly viewing a fusion reaction through this window, as it's going to have a much higher flux of x-rays coming out of there, so it will definitely have to be viewed with something like a remote camera. And now on the side here, you can see this 1.3 inch conflat flange that I mentioned earlier, and that's where the deuterium is going to be fed through. Mounted directly below the chamber, we can see the diffusion pump. Now, this past summer, I took this diffusion pump apart and I cleaned off a bunch of carbon deposits that were all over the jets. And uh, it was a really good experience to see the inside of the diffusion pump, learn a little bit more about how it works, and get it into a better working condition. I tested the heater as well, and this thing's in perfect working condition, so I can't wait to get some oil in there eventually and see what kind of a vacuum I can pull. Of course, one part that I'm still missing is a method of high vacuum measurement, so I'm looking to get some sort of an ionization gauge that will allow me to make high vacuum measurements. But at the moment, you'll see this thermocouple gauge right here, which I showed the controller to earlier, and this will allow us to get an idea of what the pressure on the roughing side of the vacuum is. Another convenient addition is this valve right here. This angle valve will allow me to isolate the diffusion pump from the roughing vacuum. This is really helpful if I need to do maintenance on the roughing side. I can completely isolate the diffusion pump and make sure that it doesn't come back to atmospheric pressure. In fact, right now, the roughing side of this vacuum is completely at atmosphere. However, the diffusion pump and chamber are still down at a regular roughing pressure. I just have that angle valve isolated. So right now I'm still using this JB Platinum DV85N vacuum pump as my roughing pump and it's not ideal for this application as it's mainly tailored towards air conditioning system evacuation. I'm hoping to upgrade to an Edwards number no. 5 pump in the near future which is much more tailored to this application. You'll also notice that my roughing hose is extremely long and this is not ideal. An ideal connection for a roughing pump is as wide of a diameter as possible and as short of a length as possible. So hopefully I can fix that in the future and make my roughing side a little bit smaller. Now one of the critical parts for a fusion reactor is the high voltage feed through because we need to have a way to get high voltage electricity to the inside of the chamber. And that's what I picked up this 30 kV electrical feed through for. This will be installed on this back 2.75 inch conflat flange and it'll allow me to feed through the high voltage required to sustain a fusion reaction into the chamber. So there's still a lot of things that need to happen before this fusor is actually operational, and the first thing on my list is the construction of the inner grid. I've been working on turning this one millimeter tungsten wire into small rings, which I'll use to construct the grid. Uh, it's a little bit hard to find time, as I'm currently a college student, but hopefully I can find some free time in the next couple weeks. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this quick update on the fusor, and I really hope that you're as excited as I am about this project. I've been wanting to build a fully working fusor for years now, and to see this thing finally coming together, it's incredibly exciting. So please subscribe, stay tuned, and happy fusing.